Hello everyone, my name is Iman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be covering our third and final objective for our lecture on chemical kinetics. And in this objective, we're going to discuss integrated rate laws and half-lives. This section will ultimately help us understand how to relate the concentration of reactants to time and how to calculate the half-life of a reaction. Now, an integrated rate law differs from a regular rate law because it explicitly brings time into the calculation. While regular rate laws give us the relationship between concentration and rate at a particular moment, integrated rate laws allow us to understand how the concentration of a reactant changes over time. And we're going to begin by looking at a first order reaction to break down how this works. For a first order reaction, we can write that the rate is equal to K, which is the rate constant, multiplied by the concentration of reactant A. Now similarly, the rate of change in concentration of A over time can also be written as the following rate is equal to the negative change of concentration for reactant A divided by change in time. Now, both of these expressions are definitions of rate. Rate equals something. So we can take these two expressions and they can be equated to give us the following relationship. Now, from this, this equation describes how the concentration of reactant A decreases over time. To integrate this expression and include time, we have to use calculus. Now, we're not going to go over how to do that, but instead we're going to say when we apply calculus, the equation becomes the following. Here we have the natural logarithm of the concentration of A at time t divided by the initial concentration of A. And this is equal to the negative k, where k is the rate constant, multiplied by time. Now this equation, it can be rearranged into a more common form. And the way that this rearranging happens is by expanding this natural log term. When you have the natural log of something in a fraction, you can rewrite it as the natural log of the numerator minus the natural log of the denominator. And when we write the left-hand side like this, we can set this equal to negative kt. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to add the natural log of our initial concentration of reactant A to both sides. On the left side, this is going to cancel out. And we are left with this equation that you see boxed in black and highlighted in yellow. This is the integrated rate law for a first order reaction. It tells us that the natural logarithm of the concentration of A at any time t is equal to the negative rate constant multiplied by time plus the natural logarithm of the initial concentration of A. With that, let's move on to the concept of half-life. The half-life is defined as the time required for half of the reactant to be consumed. In other words, it's the time it takes for the concentration of a reactant to decrease to half of its original value. To find the half-life for a first-order reaction, we're going to substitute this term, the concentration of A at any time t, with this term, one-half the initial concentration of A. We're going to replace this term into our expression for our first order reaction. So here is our expression for our first order reaction. This term right here, the concentration of A at any time t, is now going to be replaced with one half our initial concentration of reactant A. When we insert and replace, we get the following expression. The natural logarithm of one half our initial concentration divided by our initial concentration is equal to negative k 
where k is our rate constant, multiplied by t one half. This is our half life time. So now what we wanna do is we wanna rearrange this expression to solve for t one half. Now let's look at this natural logarithm term. What we have inside here is one half initial concentration divided by initial concentration. These terms cancel out. What we're left with is natural log of one half. And this is going to be equal to negative k t one half. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna multiply both sides by negative one. Now what happens when I multiply both sides with negative one? For the natural logarithm side, this becomes natural logarithm of two and this is going to be equal to k t one half. Now we wanna isolate this term so that we have our half-life expression for first order reactions. In order to do that, I have to divide both sides by the rate constant, and when I do that, I get the following expression for the half-life for a first order reaction the half-life is equal to natural logarithm of two divided by the rate constant. Now, natural logarithm of two is equal to 0 0.693, so our half-life expression for our first order reaction is equal to 0 0.693 divided by the rate constant. This tells us that for a first order reaction, the half-life is inversely proportional to the rate constant K. A larger rate constant means a shorter half-life and vice versa. Now thus far we focused on first order reactions, but it's also important to note that rate laws, integrated rate laws, and half-lives vary depending on the order of the reaction. So what you see here is a table that summarizes this information for zero, first, and second order reactions. So for each of these, you will see the rate law, the integrated rate law, the half-life expression, and what you should expect for a straight line plot. What would you be plotting to get a straight line plot for that order reaction? This is all really important information, and for most general chemistry classes, you should commit this to memory. It'll be very useful in tackling problems in your homework sets and in your exams. Now, the best way to learn how to use these expressions is to tackle practice problems. So let's tackle some together, starting off with this problem. This problem says the rate constant for a certain first order reaction is equal to 2.38 times 10 to the negative three inverse seconds at 500 degrees Celsius. If the initial concentration of A is 1.5 molar, what will the concentration be after 215 seconds? Now, as a reminder, an integrated rate law differs from the regular rate law by explicitly bringing time into the calculation. So if you're asked to determine the concentration after a certain amount of time, you must use an integrated rate law and be sure to use the appropriate one. This equation asks about a first order reaction, so we have to use the first order integrated rate law. Now this can be written in two different ways, like we saw earlier, and you're gonna get the same answer using either of these equations, but the second one right here is gonna provide a more straightforward approach for this particular problem. Now, we're asked to determine the concentration of A after 215 seconds. So we can write that the natural logarithm of reactant A after 215 seconds is going to be equal to negative k, k is given to us 2.38 times 10 to the negative three inverse seconds. This is multiplied by t, which is our time, 215 seconds, plus the natural logarithm of our initial concentration of A. And we're given this as well, it's equal to 1.50 molar. 
Now, we can plug this into a calculator, and what we're going to get is that the natural logarithm of the concentration of reactant A at 215 seconds is going to be equal to negative 0 0.1062. Now, we want to get rid of this natural logarithm so that we can solve for the final concentration of reactant A after 215 seconds. To eliminate the natural logarithm, we need to raise both sides of the equation as powers of E. This is a base of the natural logarithm. This process is often referred to as exponentiating both sides of the equation. Since E and the natural logarithm are inverse functions, applying E to both sides is going to allow us to cancel out the natural logarithm on the side where it appears. And so now we have that the concentration of A after 215 seconds is equal to E raised to negative 0.1062. And when you plug this into a calculator, you're going to get 0 0.899. So after 215 seconds, the concentration of A will have decreased to 0 0.899 molar. And that's how we solve this problem. Let's tackle one more. This problem says the half-life of a particular first-order process is 142 seconds at 100 degrees Celsius. How long would it take for 90% of A to react at this temperature? Now, a key phrase in many kinetics problems is the question, how long? Whenever you see this question, you have to use an integrated rate law to solve it. Now, in this particular problem, we're given the half-life rather than the rate constant. Therefore, we're going to begin by using the first-order half-life equation to determine the rate constant k. And then we can use the integrated first-order rate law to go ahead and determine the time. So our first step is to determine k from our half-life expression. So we're going to rearrange this to solve for k. k is equal to natural log 2 divided by our half-life. So this is going to be equal to 0 0.693, because that's what natural log 2 is equal to, divided by 142 seconds. We're given that in the problem. If we plug this into a calculator, k is equal to 4.88 times 10 to the negative 3 inverse seconds. Now we can use the integrated rate law to solve for time. We're asked how long would it take for 90% of A to react at this temperature. 90% reacted, that means that the fraction remaining is 10%, and if we were to write that in decimal form, it would be equal to 0 0.1. So this part is going to be equal to 0 0.1, because remember, this is a fraction of the concentration of A at some particular time divided by the initial concentration. Our problem is asking us how long would it take for 90% of A to react. That means we have 10% left, and we can express that as 0 0.1. So the natural log of 0 0.1 is going to be equal to negative 4.88 times 10 to the negative 3 inverse seconds multiplied by time. Now we're trying to solve for time, so we can rearrange to say that time is equal to natural log of 0 0.1 divided by negative 4.88 times 10 to the negative 3 inverse seconds. So what you notice we just did is we divided both sides by negative k so that we can isolate t, time. This is what we're trying to solve for. Now we can plug this into a calculator, and what we get for time is 472 seconds. So the time it would take for 90% of A to react at this temperature is 472 seconds. And with that, 
we solved this problem and we've completed our last and final objective for this lecture. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any more questions, comments, concerns. If you want to see more problems, just let me know. Other than that, good luck, happy studying, and have a beautiful, beautiful day.